Okay, this should be, I think I could do everything in this last video here. I'm on number five in my Gilligan's Island practice sheet. I've been listening to the Gilligan's Island soundtrack on repeat um, more times than I uh, would ever care to, and I'm looking forward to finishing up these videos. So let's see if I can knock this out in one video. I think I can. At the beginning of period five, Mary Ann finds another item, presumably lost from the plane, the one the FedEx plane to crash. She finds a Ziploc bag containing $1,000 cash. What does this mean for Mary Ann's buying power and consumption? Well, we all have a sense of that, don't we? Both are going to increase. She can buy more stuff, and surely she will, right? So that's all we're looking for there. But let's dig into this a little bit more broadly than just Marianne. Sketch this result in the aggregate supply aggregate demand model. Well, I've drawn the model since we've already repeated how to draw it a couple times. I've, I've done it in advance of this question. Here we go. And now, Marianne has more money. Her buying power is going to increase in the seven person economy. So, being a seven person economy, when one person has more buying power, consumption is going to rise, right? And consumption, investment, government expenditures, and net exports, these are the determinants of the aggregate demand. Of course, we have a closed economy here, so exports and imports aren't an issue. Um, that's going to increase aggregate demand because of this newfound money. And this increase in output is her paying everyone to work more hours than they typically do to make stuff for her because she found money. And to do that, she's initially going to have to pay them higher prices to get them to do it, basically, over time. That's the short run effect. So that's it. Now, the classical view holds that we will quickly move up to here as prices adjust and people grow weary of that overtime and demand it as more permanent pay, that is like an increase in wages or input prices. And the reason that we would adjust to there would be because there's those demands for higher wages and we would have short run aggregate supply pulled back because that's determined short run aggregate supply is input prices. So in the long run, this should happen. We should go from point A to point B to point C. At the discussion or the conflict in macroeconomics is how quickly we go from here to here. But from here to here, I mean, Marianne finds money. That's a pretty certain thing. So that's that question in the aggregate supply aggregate demand framework. And I think the rest of the sheet, if I remember correctly, is pretty, no pun intended on this, really smooth sailing. Uh, so, letter C then. Does real output increase in the short run? Yeah, because she can buy more stuff. Hey, can you make me this? Look at the money I have. Oh, yeah, I'll do that. Okay, you're going to pay me a little extra to do that? Sure, I'll do that. So, yes. Does Marianne's newfound wealth itself affect the ability of the economy to produce? That's the point. No. They still have the ice skates. They still have the same vine wires and the knowledge of how to do that stuff, but they don't have anything else to make more stuff. There's still just seven of them with the cool tools and the knowledge they have. So the money itself does not affect the ability of the economy to produce. As others work more hours to accommodate Marianne's change in demand, what must happen to their leisure time? It must be reduced, right? Because they're working more hours. It's got to come from somewhere, from leisure. As this occurs, what might they do with the price required for the, their labor? They would increase the price they require for their labor because they're giving up leisure at an increasing rate if they keep working more overtime anyway, to, to do that. Uh, and what do economists call the price of labor? That's wages. So all that is just discussing what we just did on the board. Letter F, what, is the long run, what are the long run implications of the price increases in my supply for economy's price level and level of output? In the long run, price level rises, that's what we had on there, and we're gonna return to the long run aggregate supply curve because that's the productive capacity of the economy. Letter G, since Mary Ann found this money, has the value of the dollar increased or decreased? Hmm, I give a hint here, let's see what I said. If a, is a coconut mug worth more or fewer dollars, what happens to the buying power of each dollar? Well, with more dollars chasing roughly the same amount of goods, dollars per good would be a 
clunky way of saying price. More dollars, same amount of goods, prices up. Again, being clunky. Each dollar buys less when prices rise. It buys a smaller percentage of the coconut mug if the coconut mug is more expensive. Letter G. Since Marianne found this money, uh, has I, I just did that one, sorry. Letter H. Does this affect the rate of borrowing for that the house can charge? If so, increased or decreased? Well, each dollar buys less, money is worth less. The value of money is expressed in interest rates, so it's likely this could decrease interest rates. Can we give the value of money a name? And the value of money, I just said that, is interest rates. If you increase the money supply, money's less scarce, it's lesser interest rates. Number six, does the supply of money affect the productive ability of the economy in the long run? I think we're getting repetitive here. No. Money changes are nominal. Real changes depend on resources. Letter seven, does the supply of money affect the price level in the long run? Yeah, that's what we just showed with our Aggregate Spy Demand Framework. If we have more money, same amount of goods, prices are likely to rise. Uh, number eight, in period six, this means next, next event, immigrant Tom Hanks, cast away, uh, paddles over from a neighboring island. He was there all along. They were there all along. He has been living on the neighboring island since the plane crashed two periods before. Uh, what does this do to the productive ability of the economy? Is this change real or not? Well, they have a new laborer. They have an eighth person. So it's an increase in L. This is a real change. They can make more stuff. They have another person on their economy in their economy with this immigration. Does the amount of money Mr. Hanks have affect the answer to that? Why or why not? And I have a typo in there. That should have been 8A, sorry. Uh, does, it, does it affect that? Uh, his money might change the price level in the short run output, but in the long run, what they can make is increased by his labor, and that's it. So the long run output depends on L, K, and H, and T. Uh, may our knowledge of the house function as a bank affect our initial estimate of the money supply? Going back to the very beginning, we only looked at the total sum, uh, the sum of the currency outstanding. As the house lend money, would that affect the amount of the money supply? It would, because if they lend $10 to the skipper, he's going to go out the door with $10 in his pocket, but they still have the $10 that they lent to him, at least on their books and so they've increased the money supply when banks lend money it increases the money supply um, it's just less liquid though as it's lent um, and what have we included in that in our money supply if we start to think about that then we've included loans and as we add these loans what's the money what's this called that's m2 it's less liquid um, and the size of that would depend on the deposits held in reserves by the Powells. It's hard to gauge if that, with what we're given here. If the Howells had lent part of their wealth, overall liquidity has decreased, would it, take, it would take time for them to successfully call in those loans. Then in the notes, I just kind of summarized a little bit of what we've looked at here. In particularly three through eight, we've looked at new classical thinking, where we're talking about the price, prices adjusting. The idea that output can be controlled by the supply of money is, key, is, is very Keynesian. Um, and we looked at how output can vary with money changes. Surely output fluctuations with the money supply, output fluctuates with the money supply, but in the long run, an economy produces based upon the resource it has to use to produce. And what we're getting at is called the neutrality of money. Um, what else did I want to note? Who benefits more when the productive ability of the island improves? The rich, that is the house, or poor Gillian? Well, we might have more benefit more than the other, but with the two things that we saw that increased the productive capacity of the island, we also saw lower prices. So everyone actually benefited when there were increases in real variables in the real production power of the economy it wasn't just the rich who benefited. They might have benefited even more than the poor. We don't have that here. But we can see with those lower prices and more goods and services, both 
of their extremes in our wealth in our wealth distribution from the beginning, uh, they both benefited with changes in real uh, productive resources, with improvements in real productive resources. Uh, right over here is a kind of a cliche thing: a rising tide lifts all boats, except maybe the SS Minnow. Get it? It's a real knee slapper. So I'm going to stop recording now and. Uh, as quick as I can, I'm going to stop playing this music.